Hello everyone, and welcome again to Metal, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Saba, and today we are investigating a quite interesting and key concept in non-parametric correlation, and that is the Candles Tau coefficient, or simply Candles Tau. As some other correlation coefficients and non-parametric correlation coefficients, it seeks to overcome the limitations that the standard Pearson correlation, or just correlation as it's often called, faces when the variables that you investigate are not normally distributed, or when there are outliers. Another technique that is commonly used for this particular reason is the Spearman rank correlation, and we have got a video on that, so please check this out if you're interested in Spearman first and foremost. However, now the hero of our video is Kendall's Tau. And the logic of the Kendall's Tau test is quite intuitive. You first look at pairs of observations across two variables that are matched to some observation. For example, here we have got 131 countries with log GDP per capita and GDP per capita growth as two variables. So we have got naturally pairs emerging, that is log GDP per capita and GDP per capita growth for Algeria, for example, is a pair. And it involves measuring the so-called concordant and discordant pairs. And uh, that might seem as a very sophisticated notion at first, but it's actually quite intuitive. A concordant pair of countries is a pair of countries where both variables are changing in the same direction. For example, Algeria and Australia would be a concordant pair, simply because in Australia, log GDP per capita and GDP per capita growth are higher than in Algeria. However, a country like Bangladesh would be a discordant pair to Algeria, simply because its GDP per capita is lower and its GDP per capita growth is much higher. So we have to count all concordant and discordant pairs, see which are more numerous, and then apply some simple arithmetic to extract the coefficients. And here are the formulas that we'll be using. The candles tau correlation coefficient is just the difference between the number of concordant pairs and the number of discordant pairs, divided by the number of all total pairs. And it's quite easy to see that if all pairs are concordant, there are no discordant pairs, the tau coefficient, the candles tau, would be exactly equal to 1, meaning perfect correlation. Perfect non-parametric correlation, simply because we're not interested in magnitudes of those differences, we're just interested in signs of those differences. However, if all pairs are discordant, then it would mean that this is equal to 0, this is equal to the number of total pairs, and the tau coefficient would be equal to minus 1. Perfect negative non-parametric correlation. And if it's somewhere in between, the number of uh, concordant and discordant pairs are similar, then we would say that the candles tau coefficient is close to zero. So you can already see how easy it is to interpret it and how similar it is in terms of interpretation to the conventional correlation coefficients, be it Pearson or Spearman. However, it differs slightly in terms of significance testing, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves and first approach the most challenging part of the video, how to use Excel functions to calculate or to determine whether a pair is concordant or discordant, and how to make sure that we don't double count the pairs. So here we have got a pay matrix for this particular reason, and we have got 131 by 131 matrix with all the countries, and those are indexed from 1 to 131 in columns and rows similarly. And here we can leverage the power of the index function to determine whether a pair is concordant or discordant. And here we can simply check the following. First of all, we check whether the pair is below or above the diagonal, and that is crucial to avoid double counting, or counting a pair of a country with itself, because it would be ambiguous. It has both variables at exactly the same, isn't it? So first we say that if our indicator of the column, G2, and we lock the row here, is less than our row identificator, E4, and we lock the column here, then 
we can proceed with counting this pair as either concordant or discordant. And if it's not the case, then we just abandon this pair and proceed to other calculations, because it means that we would have counted this pair somewhere else. However, if this condition holds, then we can start looking at what's going on with the signs of differences between the variables in this pair. So first, we need to input the sign of index, the first variable, which is the GDP per capita, and we lock both rows and columns here, as we don't want it to change. This stays the same throughout. And we refer to the column identificator over here. So basically, we retrieve the log GDP per capita of this particular country. And then we subtract the same variable, so log GDP per capita, of the country characterized by the row identificator, so E4 with column locked. So we have calculated the sign of this difference, and then to determine whether this difference is uh, to the same direction, we take the sign and we, then we have to multiply it by the sign of the difference in another variable. So we multiply it by the sign, so we can just copy this and paste, and then change this column B4 to C4, that would then consider GDP per capita growth as the variable of interest. And this product of signs would give us an identification of whether a pair is concordant or discordant. If the sign is equal to 1, it means it's either 1 times 1 or minus 1 times minus 1, meaning that both differences are of the same sign. If, on the other hand, the product of the signs is negative, it means that one of the differences is positive and the other is negative. That is, by definition, a sign of a discordant pair. And now, having specified this formula, we just have to avoid double counting. So if the initial condition doesn't hold, we just return zero. And then we can just use control R to fill in the first row, which is filled in with zeros, unsurprisingly, and bottom left click it all the way down to fill the whole matrix. And here we see that everything below the diagonal is filled with either ones or minus ones, and our initial uh, observation is indeed true. Uh, Algeria is concordant with Australia, but discordant with Bangladesh. That's exactly what we noticed initially. And now we have to look at the whole matrix and count the number of pairs of each kind. So first of all, Let's count the number of concordant pairs. They are dubbed by once in the whole matrix. So we can apply count if, select the range of the whole 131 by 131 matrix, and count only once. And we can see that there are 3,709 concordant pairs. Now for discordant pairs, we can actually just copy this formula and change 1 to minus 1, isn't it? And that would return the number of discordant pairs. And the number of discordant pairs is slightly higher, 4,806. And the total number of pairs is just the sum of the two, uh, 8,515. However, we could have also used the handy formula of um, n choose 2, which is equal to n times n minus 1 divided by 2, and get the same value. So let's check that. For the number of observations, we can simply count any of the variables. We can see that there are 131 countries. So if we, instead of just summing up the number of uh, concordant and discordant pairs, we apply the n choose 2 uh, formula, so n times n minus 1 divided by 2 will get exactly the same result. And that also means that we have got no ties in our data, and that's crucial for the test to work properly in this particular elaboration. So if you double check uh, this using the sum of pairs and also using the n choose 2, you can be sure that you have applied the test properly. And now we can finally calculate the Kendall's tau, which is analogous to a correlation coefficient. So in the numerator, we would have concordant minus discordant. And in the denominator, we would have the total number of pairs. And we'll get minus 0.13, approximately. Meaning that the non parametric correlation between GDP growth and initial log GDP per capita is negative. And that's unsurprising as convergence, that is, poorer countries grow faster and catch up with their richer counterparts, is a key observation in economic growth and international macroeconomics. However, is this relationship statistically significant? 
And here is where there is a special formula for the Kandelstau Z stat that has three times the difference between concordant and discordant pairs in the numerator and an expression uh, involving n in the denominator. So let's calculate the Z stat. So first of all, in the numerator, we have got three times the difference between concordant and discordant. And in the denominator, we have got a square root of n times n minus 1 divided by 2 times 2 times n plus 5. And we close the parentheses for the square root, enforce the formula, and get minus 2.18. And that's a pretty high z-stat, and we can already eyeball that it is a significant uh, z-stat. However, to be absolutely sure, let's formally apply a two-tailed z-test. And as this particular statistic is normally distributed with mean 0 and variance or standard error 1, we can apply it the usual way. 2 times 1 minus normal standard distribution of the absolute value of the z-statistic and 1 for the cumulative distribution. Enforcing that, we get a p-value of 2.91%, which is less than 5%, meaning that this correlation coefficient, this candle style, is significantly different from 0, and it's indeed the case that non-parametrically, richer countries grow slower than their poorer counterparts. And that's all there is for Kendall Stow, testing it for statistical significance and its application to a very famous problem in macroeconomics. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos as business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.